in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this you know you need to learn these things it's not every time a man of god will pray for you imagine the number of you that are here if i need to call you if i need to give you a prophetic word if i need to pray for you how many will i pray for in one month before i get to everybody maybe it will be four months are you following and some of the things you need may be very urgent this is why in addition to prophetic declarations in addition to impartations we also teach you the principles of the kingdom because these are systems that god has put in place for our advantage and we must know them and we must engage them hallelujah and so tonight i want to show you one of the systems that god has put in place to bless his children and that system is called the system of the fear of the lord the reason one of the reasons our christianity is becoming almost important is not the lack of revelation is the lack of the fear of the lord if you go around christians today and you see what people who call themselves christians say and do you will wonder if they were disciples some of us go as far as making mockery of spiritual things some of us go as far as blaspheming the name of the lord and listen it's even very mild in africa when you go to the western world there are people who literally curse god you see them wearing clothes that say terrible things about god very terrible things because the fear of the lord is not being taught and so people are not growing in it and that's why with all the revelations we have we are not manifesting the level of power that the generations that didn't have as much revelation manifested you know truth is absolute but revelation is progressive all of god has not changed but we can't know all of god in one generation so from time to time god gives more revelation about himself now this generation is supposed to be the generation with the highest revelation of god you know why because we have documents of the revelations of god that all the generations that came before us chronicled so we have the best advantage in our work with god but unfortunately the generations that came before us walked in dimensions of god that we can only imagine and i can tell you one of the reasons that we are not seeing so much of god is because the fear of the lord is lacking and so tonight i want to share with us very briefly on the subject of the fear of the lord because the fear of the lord must return to the church so that most of the things god wants to do through us he will be able to do them hallelujah when we speak about the fear of the lord we are not saying you should be afraid of god god is our father in fact the bible says we should come before the throne of grace with boldness it says come boldly before the throne of grace hebrews 4 16 that you may obtain help for the times of need so the fear of the lord is not saying be afraid of god righteousness gives you boldness to approach god when we speak about the fear of the lord we are talking about a disposition of reverence we are talking about a disposition of honor we are talking about a disposition of hour and we are talking about a place of quick and absolute obedience to the commandments of god these things are now lacking in our generation if we have our reverence honor for god you will see how much god can do with us in a short while we are in a generation where god talks and somebody say yes god said it but i can't do it there's no reverence we are in a generation where god is talking and people are busy with other things there's no hour for god we are in a generation where god gives people express command and they disobey and they don't see the need for repentance because the fear of the lord is lacking and this is one of the major things that forms the foundation of our work with god when you have understood the doctrine of christ and the doctrine of salvation and by implication believe in the death burial and resurrection of jesus you are properly saved the next thing that is very important is for you to learn the fear of god if you don't have the fear of god you can never go far with god no matter how gifted you are 
and no matter the revelations you have glory to god and so wisdom moral living and intimacy are orchestrated by the fear of god when you find somebody who is operating with wisdom when you find somebody who is morally upright when you find somebody who has strong relationship intimacy with god that person reverences honors and trembles at god's presence in fact it will make god open up himself to you i show you a few scriptures psalm 25 verse 14 the bible said the secrets of god other versions said the intimacies of god it said they are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant and so a man cannot come into deep relationship with god if he does not have reverence honor for god if he does not tremble at god's word and as, at god's presence this is why most of the things that are meant for our advantage we can't access them because there is no fear for god in psalm 33 verse 8 the bible says, let all the earth fear the lord it says, let the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him all the inhabitants of the earth shall stand in awe of god this is one of the things that stood jesus out in fact when you read isaiah 11 from verse 1 to 3 you will see the value that god places on the fear of the lord he said and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse and the branch shall grow out of his root next verse he said and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him and he said the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the lord seven dimensions of the spirit of god the lordship the wisdom the understanding the knowledge the counsel the might and the fear of god he now went to the next verse out of this seven spirit he now re-emphasized the fear of the lord he said and the spirit of the lord go to verse 3 and he said and shall make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears so the fear of the lord is what gave him authority for judgment and the fear of the lord is what kept him in accuracy he shall not judge that means that fear made him a judge number two he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes or the hearing he came into precision beyond the operation of his senses that level of life that level of functionality only the fear of god can put it see we want to exercise dominion and we don't have fear for god you can't be a judge you can exercise kingdom authority if you don't have fear for god meanwhile we need to be able to exercise authority in different spheres of our lives from our careers to our relationships to our interactions in the environment where we find ourselves to keeping the devil at bay all of these things require authority but how can we exercise those dimensions of authority when there's no fear of god in fact this is a generation where sometimes a whole church gathers organized vigil and they think their prayer still does not happen such was not found in the early church if church gathers in the early church if it takes an angel to come down from heaven that angel will descend unless church does not gather the bible said in acts chapter 12 that peter was thrown to prison because when james was killed he said herod saw that he pleased the jews and he went for peter threw him into prison and he said prayer was made of the church for him and an angel descended chains fell on their own accord gates opened on their own accord the angel led him to safety look at the level of authority that that church was wielding that angel didn't return to heaven that was the same angel that struck herod because a system was created where men honored herod and gave him an oration that made him to be equal with god and he accepted it and that angel judged him before going so in those days if church tell you we will pray on your matter nobody will tell you you go and look for peace but nowadays we pray we prophesy we declare nothing happened because the fear of god is no longer there there's no reverence there's no honor there's no obedience to his word there's no trembling at the word of god this has made us very weak and the devil will continually sponsor the fear of god this is why god himself requires that we walk in the fear of the lord in deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 it says, and now israel what does the lord thy god require of thee he said but to fear the lord thy god and to walk in his ways and to love him and to serve the lord thy god with all thy soul so before you love god you must fear him before you serve god you must fear him most of us are singing songs that are emotional and we are weeping and we think that is love 
God can't vet your love for him except as he first of all sees your honor and reverence. This is why he told, the, he told the children of Israel, he said they should fear God before they love him. And they should fear God before they serve him. That means your service will not be received except as, we, as it comes with a lot of honor and reverence for God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 and 29, it says, have you received the kingdom that cannot be moved? He said, let us receive grace whereby we serve God acceptably. How do you serve God acceptably? With fear, with godly fear, with reverence and godly fear. So if you don't have reverence for God, you can't serve him acceptably. No matter the grace that you carry. He said, for our God is a consuming fire. The things we say in the house of God, the actions we carry out in the house of God, sometimes it's scary. So when you see people talk in church or act in church, you will now wonder what they will do at home. Sometimes we are screaming at ourselves, quarreling and fighting on the altar. And when you ask, you say, can you imagine what this person told me? Even if this person told you what he shouldn't have told you, are you not conscious of where you are? That you are in God's presence and you see Christians fight, keep malice, backbite, attack themselves and they say they are ushers. They say they are choir members. They say they are co-pastors in the same organization. And they are attacking themselves, backbiting themselves, keeping money. And they come, when we carry the microphone, we know the cliche. God is good. If you believe God, he will show up for you. Glory to God. Somebody give the Lord a big hand. We know all the language. And somebody is fighting with the next person. When he comes here and asks that drama, he goes back and looks at the person. And face this side, this one face this side. And we do that sometimes for months and for years without the consciousness that God is in our midst. If a generation is not taught the fear of the Lord, we may become victims faster than we know it. Because this thing is a system of insurance. It is in the context of the fear of God that God can be loved correctly. It's in the context of the fear of God that God can be served correctly. So, the fear of God is one of the heaviest molecules of our life. In fact, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the Bible puts it this way. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It says, fear God and keep his commandment. It says, this is the whole duty of man. If you fear God and if you keep his commandment, it says, you have fulfilled the whole duty of man. Because outside of this reality, nothing you do is accepted in the realm of God. If we were to take a, an examination of ourselves, do we fear God? Do we fear God? Somebody has a responsibility in the house of God. He doesn't prepare for it. He just throws from nowhere and rushes to the altar and say, oh, glory to God. Really? If you are to meet the governor of your state, is that how you will go? Will you run into that meeting and say, where is governor? Where is governor? And, and, and start talking. Even you know that if you don't prepare, you are in trouble. If you are to meet the governor of your state, some of you, the way you come to church, is that how you will go there? Most of us who are seated here, if we have an appointment to see a counselor, not a senator, not a governor, not the president. If we have that appointment, we will not sleep overnight. And we will be dressed in our best attire and come hours before the meeting. Because we know we don't want to miss it. There are some of us here who in our workplaces, the mistakes we know we can't make, we make it every day in church. If they give you a job and you make a mistake, you know you'll be queried. And so the regard you have for your job makes you always to be your best. But when you come to the house of God, or when you are doing something that pertains to God, that's where laxity comes in. That's where lackadaisical attitudes comes in. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, I have hardly heard of people who have problems in their family because the man is a doctor and is busy. I've hardly heard of people who have problems in their family. I'm not saying they don't exist. But I'm saying these things are rare. That people have problems because the husband or the wife is in the military. And he's busy with work or the guy is a ceo and he's busy at work but if it is god go for evangelism and not come back and you will see the challenge that will happen travel for mission and not come back and see the challenge when it has to do with god it becomes something we do when it's convenient that is because there's no regard for god that's because there's no reverence for god some of us here are teachers in secondary schools we plan our notes weeks before the, the before our classes and when we go to class we teach with zest because we know we are being monitored but when we come to church 
they said you see people at the door we are casual and this is not about church it's about our general interactions with the things of god god judges our service through the level of regard and reverence we give to it most of us here who make phone calls in god's presence who are on whatsapp in god's presence we know we can't try it if we're in a board meeting with the ceo of a bank even you know your phone can ring before you are told you will switch it off you don't even want it to vibrate by mistake but when we come to church nowadays it's even a trend when worship is going on you see people remove phones and they are dancing and i'm looking i say is that thing you are doing worship do you know what worship is if you must get the video there is a system designed to transmit it at the end of the service go and get it for the purpose of order and organization there is a system in the old testament and in the olden days they use scribes those are the ones who write if you need the document get it from them later in the new testament we have audiovisual equipment to to translate what we are doing if you need it wait at the end of the service get it who told you it can you some of the things we do can we do it before men somebody is, is praying and is chewing god yeah lord you know you are a good god <laughs> meanwhile I, listen i'm not i'm not particular about chewing gum but you judge yourself if you are talking to a governor will you be chewing gum and say ah <laughs> your, uh, your excellency uh, yes 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 uh, if you this, this is not if i give you law to become legalism but you now judge it based on your reverence quotient what you cannot do before a man who told you you can do it before god this is why we are not seeing the dimensions of god we are hoping for the bible said this is the whole duty of man he said fear god keep his commandment do you know that our relationship with ourselves are not working because we don't fear god if you fear god you can't cheat against your wife if you fear god you can't cheat on your husband if you fear god you can't steal from your employer because your loyalty is not first to man it's to god but you find people who say they are married in god's presence cheat on their spouses and they act as if nothing happened because they are godless the fear of god is not there somebody can sit with you and be telling you don't worry in two hours i go send that money i go send that money he knows it's a lie and to him his word means nothing he just discharges you and go away he doesn't know that when he speaks the weight of his words is informed by his re relationship with god so it's not about lying to you it's about what lie means before god so he won't lie to you not because you are important he will not lie because lie is an offense to god and so the reason he will be truthful in his work with you is because if he lies god will be offended even before you're offended so our relationships are not working because we don't fear god people do what they want because they like it and this is what is destroying the western world i was teaching in manchester last week and i told them what is happening here the bible calls it foolishness if you read romans chapter 1 from verse 18 to 26 he said when women lost with passion after women and he said when men lost with passion after men it's foolishness it means they are beside themselves he says it's a shameful act but people are carrying placards and contending for it and they are discussing it in parliament you know and these are christian nations and they are discussing it yes uh, people are born like that he, he, did god permit it that's where we should start the conversation from it's not i feel like a woman i know you feel like a woman if you are feeling like a woman let's look for a way to help you but the idea of going to have a relationship with woman is not a conversation among the saints because it's not permitted i can't wake up now and say i feel pregnant it is not permitted for man to be pregnant so if i feel pregnant they will look for what to do to help me but the idea of trying to be pregnant it doesn't exist so if god says not so that you feel it does not mean there is jurisdiction it's not permitted oh i love this man i don't know maybe it's because i feel like a woman if you feel like a woman let's examine what is wrong with you maybe there's a mental challenge maybe there's an emotional imbalance and when we, we look for maybe we'll begin with counseling if we need to use doctors and if we need to cast out demons we will cast out because demons are involved Let, let's begin to cast out demons but the idea of saying because i feel like a woman i'm attracted to a man it doesn't exist because our god says no but when there is no fear of god things that shouldn't be discussed become the major topic and then you find us talking and arguing what a shame the fear of the lord 
and the devil uses it to creep into our civilization and pull down God's ordinance. If people are arguing that men love men, women love women, where then is the conversation around immorality? <laughs> that means they have gone past in the scale of iniquity, immorality is no longer a sin. They've gone, that means they've gone past there. They've gone past. No, who is talking? We are talking perversion. And these are topics. You see that God frowns against this thing. A whole city was burned down with fire because God hates it. Scriptures clearly states it that this thing is foolishness. Men are beside themselves. It's not permitted. But you find people saying it. Clear scriptures on simple subjects. People say, no, they can't do it. And we are looking for a way out. Because God has become so small that we can push him aside and look for alternatives. What a generation. See, if you examine this matter cr critically, most of us, we need repentance. I'm telling you. Most of us, we need a lot of repentance. Because most of the things we do, if we fear God, we will not do it. We will not do it. A man of God, somebody comes to you because you say you are a man of God. And he is relating with you because of man of God. He's older than you, but he's respecting you because you are a man of God. A woman, a lady comes to you respecting you because you are a man of God. You have seen the opportunity to exploit the person. Because this person honors you, you can do what you want. And men are doing despicable things. Sometimes when you see the scandals online, you are just ashamed that some people are called Christians before you even talk of man of God. How did you begin to talk to a lady who is not your wife? How did you build a close relationship so much that you are chatting twice a week? How, what created that conversation? How, how did you begin the conversation? A lady who is not your wife, you, you, you chat with her until you build affection through communication to show you the frequency of conversation. And then when you talk for a while, you start having an appointment. And then it results in immorality. And immorality continues until because God loves your soul, He allows candor to hit you. So that if what revelation can do, let shame do. And even at that, even at that, people are building systems to cover up. They raise their disciples to go online and counter it. They are using money. What a shame. The fear of God has departed from our generation. If we will pray sincerely, one of the things we will pray for consciously. Is for God to teach us the fear of God again because so much has been lost because the fear of God is gone let me show you very quickly before we begin to pray the, the benefits of walking in reverence in honor in trembling and in obedience to God the benefits are enormous and I will show you why our Christian experience are not the same that we give our hearts to Christ the same day does not mean we'll have the same experience and that I gave my heart to Christ before you does not mean I will have a better experience in Christ than you. There are parameters that governs our experiences as we walk with God. There are parameters. And the fear of God is one of it. If you see that the quality of people's Christianity are different, trace it to their practices. The practice we engage on the strength of our conviction and faith is what separates us into different cadres in our Christian experiences. And fear of God is one of it. See the benefits of the fear of God. And then you will see why some Christians are flying as though they are stars. And other Christians are being rubbished as though what the Bible says about who we are is a lie. Number one, the fear of God gives wisdom and understanding. And you know the benefits of wisdom. Proverbs 1 7, it said, The fear of the Lord. Is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom does not begin because you read a book. Wisdom begins because honor, reverence for God has been activated in your heart. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Same scripture, verbatim, Proverbs 9 10. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If you despise instruction, you will suffer the consequence. And so when you find Christians who are struggling most of the time, it's because they lack wisdom. The Bible says, through wisdom is an house built. It said, by understanding is established, and by knowledge, all the chambers are filled with good things. So when you find Christians who struggle, some of the times, it's because they lack the wisdom for building. And most of those dimensions of wisdom comes because we fear God. See the way the Bible puts it in Proverbs 8, verse 12, 15 and 16. Wisdom was describing himself. It said, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. 
I and find out knowledge of witty inventions. If we were to walk in wisdom, things will come out of us that the world will wonder. And it doesn't stop there. In verse 15, it said, By me, kings reign, princes decree justice. Verse 16, it said, By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. So the power to reign, the power to judge, and the power to bring governance in your world is a function of wisdom. So when you find Christians who are made kings and priests but not reigning, most of the times there's no fear of God. You know, Revelation 1 6 said, Unto him that washed us and made us kings and priests. So you and I are kings and priests, but not all of us are reigning. So when you find a Christian who is not reigning, sometimes it's not lack of revelation, sometimes it's lack of the fear of God. By me, princes reign. By me, rulers decree justice. Nobles, yea, all the judges of the earth. You are supposed to reign in your generation. You are supposed to be influential, advancing God's kingdom. But you are doing everything you know to do. Nothing is happening. Check the fear quotient of God. That's why you have a voice that is not heard. That's why you have a wisdom that is not applied. That's why you put so much effort, yet no result. Because you can't reign without fear. The first benefit of the fear of God is that it procures wisdom for those who fear Him. In Proverbs 15, 33, it says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of the wise. So those who are wise, the way they are instructed unto wisdom is that they fear God. And as you are moving, God tells you, turn left, greet this person, wake up, pray. And you are just receiving precise instruction for destiny. You don't even know how you are receiving them. It's because of your heart posture in fear. Whereas there's another Christian who doesn't fear God. He fasts 10, 10 days every month and he has not received one instruction. His life is full of errors and mistakes. God was talking to me two days ago and he told me one of the best dimension of intelligence is the intelligence for choice making. Making choices. Many people have failed in life because of wrong choices. And whether you made the right choice or not, it's not primarily about the books you read. Though. It's about the inspirations that come to you part time. Because there's no book you can read and preempt your future. It says it's not given to man that walketh to order his step. As we are sitting here, all of us have different possibilities for tomorrow. Whether you will make the right choice against tomorrow that you have not entered is when wisdom opens you to inspiration. But that kind of wisdom is not bought in the supermarket. It is available to those who fear God. He said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of the wise. Second benefit of the fear of God is long and fruitful life. This is a generation where they will tell you, Doctor, what is life expectancy rate now? Sorry? In Africa, what? 50 something. Ah, the thing is still higher. <laughs> I thought it was lower now. Thank God. That means mercy is speaking. Life, life expectancy rate is somewhere above 50. Can you imagine? This is the same world we live in that when most of us were young, you saw people in their 90s. Some have no teeth in their mouth anymore. They are so old that they become smallish and you can carry them from the ground. Now you, feel, you find young men dying strangely. A young teenager of 19, they say high blood pressure. What concerns a 19 year old be high blood pressure? You find all kinds of plagues killing people. The fear of God is not there. And because the fear of God is not there, the defense system that should give them advantage is not functioning. Because these are the precursors that make them happen. See, everything God made available to us, they are precursors to activating them. Some are activated by faith. Some are activated by prayer. And some are activated by the fear of the Lord. I show you a few scriptures. Proverbs 10, 27. It says, the fear of the Lord prolonged days. It says, but the years of the wicked are shortened. The fear of the Lord does what? Prolonged your days. So in addition to exercise, rest, and good diet, make sure you fear God. And make sure you honor your father and your mother. Because these are secrets in addition to the natural things you know. You know when God creates these things, is to give us his children an advantage. You know the people of the world don't have this understanding. These are, these are disclosures that they don't have access to. So all they know is exercise, is rest, is diet. Very beautiful. But in addition to that, some of us know other things. 
So when we honor our father and our mother, it gives us an advantage in long life. When we fear the Lord, it gives us an advantage. This is why God gives us this secret. He said in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secrets of the Lord. He said the secret things belong to God. He said, but the things that are revealed, they are not for the whole world. They are for God's children. But see our problem, the things God reveals, we neglect them. So, will you live long? Yes. Why? Not just because I live healthy, but because in addition to healthy living, I fear God. And so I know that the fear of God has already insulated me from untimely death. These are secrets that God makes available to us. Proverbs 19.23 The fear of the Lord tended to life and he that hath it shall abide, satisfied, and he shall not be visited with evil. What an insurance. That's why I tell my people here, pray with revelation. Are you seeing a lifestyle that if you sustain, evil can't come near you? He said, the fear of the Lord tended to life. It produces, it fast, fast track, it energizes life. He said, he that had it, had it, shall abide what? Satisfied. So one of the secrets of satisfaction is to fear God. And that's not all. He said, that person shall not be visited with evil. So evil can't come to my house because I fear God. I pray about it. I prophesy it. But in addition to prayer and prophecy, I fear God. So in case I didn't pray, it doesn't mean there's an open door for evil. Fear of God will create an insurance. These are benefits. That's why I said it gives you long and fruitful life. Please learn these things. Practice them. You will need them. If you know how many enemies you have, you'll be sure to. If you know how many attacks the devil is marshalling, I read the scripture some time ago and I was shocked. I think that was Psalm 91 verse 7. It said, a thousand shall fall by your side. It said, ten thousand by your right hand. Wow. You mean in one day, there are eleven thousand crises designed for me, but the Bible says none shall come near you. That means the things God allows to come near you are already estimated not to be able to defeat you. So God allows those ones so that you can use it to build your faith muscles. The ones that can kill you, he said, they will not come near you. Because you have made God, even the most high, your habitation. So a man who lives under God's presence is secure. In the same vein, a man who fears God, evil can't visit him. As I'm here, if you like, wish it, it won't happen. Oh, this ministry is about to go down. You are joking. The next time you will check is another testimony. And we will keep scaling up. Oh, this man will die. You are a joker. We will be here until we are old. I've seen my ship. <laughs> the other time, I stood, I stood up and my back ate me somehow. And I was walking like I was 80. Somebody said, why are you walking like I don't know? I said, that's my ship when I'm 80. Die here. We must finish our assignment. We are going nowhere, sir. Any day we leave, know that we have emptied ourselves. The way the patriarchs left, he said, when they serve the will of God, they rest with their fathers. We don't go without fulfilling purpose. And I prophesy over someone, you will live to a long, fruitful old age. In the name of Jesus. But this is one of the keys, the fear of the Lord. Listen, honor God in your heart. Tremble at God's word. Tremble at God's presence. There are blessings to it. Most of us don't know so much. We think the blessings of God begins and ends when the man of God prays for us. That's, that's the least way God blesses people. That's like a, the way, the reason God designs that is like jump-starting a, 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 a car battery. You know, when a car battery shuts down, you need another battery to, to jump-start it. But the system is not for batteries to be jump-started. The system is for batteries to be invigorated on their own so that they keep powering. So, praying for you by a man of God is a system God designed when every other thing seems not to be working. So, it's a manual, it's an analog process. But there are digital dimensions. If you carry God's presence, things work for you. Moses carried it and walked through the Sinai desert. 40 years, food was common. Their clothes did not weary. Their shoe grew with them. In the desert, nobody was prophesying. They carried presence. Those are digital dimensions. The fear of God is also a digital dimension. When you carry it, even if nobody prophesies over you, you are protected. Nothing can attack you. Thank God for raising men that can pray for us. Thank God for raising men that can prophesy over us. But in case they are not there, they are not the Holy Ghost. Jesus is still there and there are systems he has provided. But one of the ways of routing those systems 
is by the fear of the Lord. Number three, blessing of the fear of the Lord is that it brings comfort from the spirit. There is a dimension of comfort that is not resources that produce it. It's the fear of the Lord that bets it from the spirit. Acts 9, 31. When Paul was arrested, in addition to stopping the mayhem that Paul was wrecking on the church, the Bible said there was another system God taught the church to keep them in comfort. And that system was the fear of the Lord. He said, then had the church rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the spirit were multiplied. So there was a multiplication that was sponsored by the comfort of the spirit and the comfort of the spirit was sponsored by the fear of the Lord. So on one side, Paul was attacking them. God stopped Paul. But on another side, God taught them a new system. That if you want to maintain the comfort of the spirit, walk in the fear of the Lord. And so long as they walked in the fear of the Lord, the Bible said they had comfort and they were multiplied. Listen, there are systems for your advantage. Learn them, practice them. Anything that makes you trivialize God's presence, God's word, and God's agenda, run away from it. It is about to kill you. Never, Joe, so much about your outcome depends on it. Number four, blessing of the fear of the Lord is that he repels evil. I've read one for you already. But Proverbs 16, 6 said, By mercy and truth, iniquity is poured. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. By the fear of the Lord. So when you see people who naturally escape evil, it's a force guiding them. They say, oh, they're about to shoot people there. you delay for five minutes. You don't know why you delayed, but something delayed you. And by the time you reach, they say, evil just happened here. It's the fear of God. It brings you into a system of preservation by the precision of the Holy Ghost. Oh, there's about to be an accident here. You just moved. And even you don't know why. And you are just one second before or one second after. You can't explain it. It's the fear of God. It makes you, this depart from evil is not just that because you fear God, you refuse to indulge in iniquity. That's part of it. But it also means that evil does not happen where you are. The fear of God will carry you away. It will shift you away. And how often we need this level of discernment. This is a world where you can sit down, somebody is drunk driving, and he can run into a shop. If you don't move, something can just happen. Imagine if you were functioning by that level of precision. That nothing evil happens around you. Because if it is ahead, you are behind. If it is behind, you are in front. What kind of life is that? It's a life sponsored by the fear of God. Now, I prophesy over someone. From this day forward, evil will not meet up with you. Before it shows up like the wind, you will vaporize. You will never be caught in evil. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessings of the fear of God. Now, listen. Why am I teaching this? Tonight, we are going to thank God for the blessings he makes available to us that we are not aware of. Some of you don't know what God has done for you. Just because you reverence it. They sent arrows from the village. Five arrows has come. They came to your window and went back. And the native doctor is there wondering, why are these things not working? I've used it for 40 years. I've killed 54 people. Why is it not working with you? The last one he shoots will come and kill him. And listen, you may not be aware most of you think what you are thanking God for is all God has done. You are joking. He said, 1,000 fall by your side. 10,000 by your right hand. He doesn't come near you. That means there are 11,000 attacks you have escaped that you don't know about. So that one you are thanking God for is good. But every time you thank God for what you know, be rest assured that there is so much you don't know that you should thank God for. And this is one of the systems that sponsors those dimensions. It repels evil. It takes you away from evil. The fear of the Lord. Number five. Benefit of the fear of the Lord. It triggers desire for righteous living. When you see people who live in sin casually. They don't fear God. They don't love God. If you love God, the love of God will compel you. If you fear God, the fear of God will restrain you. Many times, people casually indulge in evil because they don't fear God. Somebody said his name is Paul and he's a loot in his job. Do you know who Paul is? My name is Barnabas. Barnabas? You know who Barnabas is? Some people say they are Abraham. You are Abraham. 
Do you know who Abraham is? And there are some nations where people even bear Jesus. And you will see somebody bearing Jesus is a fornicator. Do you know the meaning of that name? Because there's no fear. But hear me. If the fear of God is activated in your life, anything that God does not want, you will run away from it. You won't wait for anybody to advise you. You will take off. Because if you do it, life will become a frustration for you. The fear of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Philippians 2 12. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. You can't cleanse yourself from filth if you don't fear God. You will enter because we respond to your emotions much more than you will respond to the impulses of the fear of God. Philippians 2 verse 12. I'm showing you why we are not maximizing some of the things God has made available. Paul said, We are for my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. He said, Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. There are many things packaged in salvation that we are not experiencing because we have not allowed fear for God to garrison our operation. Hope you know righteousness is a power for reigning, it's a day which receive abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Romans 5 17. So when a Christian is not reigning, it's because he's not living righteous. The nature of righteousness is what we call righteousness, but the practice of righteousness is what we call holiness. So he said we must perfect that practice in the fear of the Lord. And it's in perfecting that practice that we begin to exercise the authority that makes us reign. But I can tell you, many people with great visions, great ideas, full of inspiration, yet not reigning. Because there's no fear for God. So the forces of life dismantles everything they set up. And they don't know why they cannot receive the necessary backing to cause them to soar. And it looks as if God favors some more than the other. No, he doesn't. But his kingdom is governed by laws and principles. If you align to those laws, it will work for you. Did you not read when the captain of the Lord's host stood before Joshua? In Joshua chapter 6 verse 2. Are you for us or against us? Nay, I'm not for you. I'm not against you. I'm on the Lord's side. If you are on the Lord's side, then I'm for you. I didn't come here to take side. I came on the side of God. This is how God's systems work. Everything God has packaged for us is available within the confines of our alignment to his kingdom. If we don't align, it is there. We'll never experience it. This is why many Christians are not doing well. Not because doing well is not part of the package. It is part of it. But there is a system that allows it. The fear of God. See how simple this thing is. But see the enormity and the magnitude of things it can rob us of long life can be taken blessings can be taken evil can just happen just because one doesn't fear god we must maximize this part of our work with god learn it and i will show you you can learn the fear of god you can learn it because you trivialize god now because you were taught it you start with people who say, I beg, forget all this when I talk about God. Every day, God, God, God. We don't go do anything. And they kept entering you. They kept entering you. You start, they are talking. You say, John 14. They say, Oga, 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 Oga. No, be Bible school. This is not Bible school. I beg, I beg. Go to church, go quote scripture. You don't know what is happening. Hey, there are somewhere you say, but the Bible says we should don't do. They say, which Bible? This is a, a, this is a public office. Are you a professional at all? All these religious by God. And they suffocated the fear of God on your inside. A day now comes, they quote scripture, I say, relax. You didn't know you were learning. You were learning. You were learning. See, we learn what we see and hear. You mustn't wear uniform and sit in the school to learn. Most of all, pick a lot of things from the market. Pick a lot of things from the gutters. You sit down, you are watching movies where they are making caricature of spiritual things. And you are laughing. Ha, 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 ha. This film, he found you. <laughs> you too, you will see that God will become nothing in your sight because you don't know that they are educating you. See, those who act those things, those who project those things, they know the intelligence that they are, they are handling, you. they know what they are doing. You are the one thing they are trying to make you laugh. 
they are sending an academic system to a generation so that a point will come when it will become normal you are seeing the acting movies and showing you that scriptures are not reliable they are showing you that god is not real and you are there saying mm, but science don't improve see the way they are using ai you think they are talking ai they are showing you another god you don't know the intelligence that sponsors those things do you think all of these movies about superstars is just to entertain children you think it's to entertain children all the superman the spider-man the batman you think they want to entertain children <laughs> you must you must be naive to think so they are teaching the younger generation that salvation is with men there's nothing like looking up to god so if you are in danger instead of calling on god look for a superman and most of you who don't take time to teach your children a point will come when they will believe superman much more than anything you tell them about god later you think it's not an educational system they know the name of all the supermen all the, the the fictional characters but they don't know 10 scriptures and you think they are not being educated when they now come to church later and you are telling them jesus saves they don't know what you are saying as far as they are concerned a boy was trapped in a 10 story building with fire it was batman that went there it was spider-man that went there so all they know about salvation is spider-man they don't know what jesus we are talking about because they have educated them from infancy the same way godlessness can be taught the fear of god can also be learned that's why you must be conscious to learn the things that trigger the fear of god because there are things that trigger the fear of god number one is to study about the almightiness of god you know sometimes when we preach here we take time deliberately to show you about the majesty of god we are selling something to your spirit it's not just about the scripture it's not just about the mysteries when you keep hearing and being pounded with the knowledge of the mightiness of god the mighty acts of god a point will come when your honor for god will increase your reverence for god will increase your your obedience to god will increase because somewhere somehow god will become supreme even in your subconscious but for you to come to that level you must expose yourself to the systems that produces and presents the almightiness of god because most of us don't fear god because god is not almighty and supreme in our subconscious look at this scripture psalm 33 verse 8 to 9 write these scriptures down please these are capsules he said let all the earth fear the lord let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of god verse 9 he said for he spake and he was done so he's telling you why you should fear god because of his authority because of his almightiness he spake and it was done he commanded and he stood fast so every time you study scripture and you are reading about the power of god you open genesis chapter 1 the bible is talking about creation they didn't just put it there so that you know the story of creation because we have read it and read it we don't know how light came from from darkness we don't know how water appeared we don't know how the earth was separated from the waters so it wasn't put there for us to know it in the first place it was put there to send another message that there is a supreme being that has the power to bet something out of nothing so every time you see scriptures that advances the almightiness of god one of the things he's doing is that he's teaching you the fear of god and the more you expose yourself to it the more god becomes supreme exodus 14 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians and the people did what they feared god when you see why do you think we share testimonies here sometimes is to let you know that this thing is not theology that this god is real and it can change impossible situations around that's why we encourage sharing testimonies and some of us when we preach we share the stories of what god has done in the past and what god is doing now because these stories will stir faith in your heart you will begin to see god as the answer to impossibilities when we share we share stories about what god is doing not just with people in bible days but even now to let you know that those are not fictions that ended when the bible was written that those things are still happening today and the point comes the more you hear these things you'll discover that the majesty of god becomes real to you most of us can't even receive from god because god is small in our eyes 
a doctor can give you a report and you will lose sleep but you will see the bible tell you that this report is counter and it means nothing to you because you have heard so much about medicine so you drag the testimony from the hospital much more than you revere the testimony from scripture you think he said this is not far-fetched for those who have reports from doctors ask them when they hear the one from church it doesn't mean much to them you'll see them walk about and see i have typhoid i have cancer i have this you will i'm not saying deny those things but you will never hear them instead of saying i have cancer say by his stripes i'm healed you will never hear them say the spirit that raised up jesus from the dead dwells in me my mortal body is quickening. you will never hear them say it's the one they told them from the hospital they will remember meanwhile the names from the hospital are so hard yet yeah, they will cram it staphylococcus auris they will cram it lumbar spondylosis they, they will cram it Sinusida, ba, 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 ba. very strange name they will recite it and they will tell everybody that cares to know those things but you will never hear them say yes the doctor said something but this is what the word of the lord said you will never hear them meanwhile the bible says search ye out of the book of the law and read it said none of these things shall fail the mouth of the law has spoken it his spirit gathered it what we read from scripture they are gathered by the holy ghost they are gathered god expects us to enforce it on earth because thy word oh lord is settled in heaven it's my duty to settle it on earth so when I see what God said, I take it and I apply it to my circumstance. So that's not me telling somebody, the doctor said I have three weeks to leave. I said, God said, oh my God. He begin to say, he said the years of my life shall be first call. And if by reason of strength, they shall be first call and ten. That's what you say. That's what you say. Oh, they say from what the economy is doing, nobody will prosper. Not me, I'm not part of them. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. He added no sorrow to it. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. He added no sorrow to it. Oh, I shall lay up gold as dust, as the gold and the gold of offer, as the stones of the brooks. That's what we say. I know what the economy is saying, but I believe God more than the economy. I believe God more than the economy. That's what you say. It's the almightiness of God that unlocks the power of God. Most of us carry testimonies that draw us back because we believe fact more than truth. Now something is real in the physical does not mean it is real in the spiritual. For something to have authority over you, it must be both real in the physical and real in the spiritual. But many times, what is real in the physical is a mirage in the spiritual. That's why you have to hold on to the word of God. Hold on. They say you are finished. We don't finish. No way. The Bible says, gather together, you shall scatter. Take counsel together, you shall come to know. Our God is in our midst. God is with me. I don't finish. I don't finish. We don't know how to finish. For he frustrated the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. We don't finish. Oh, though the enemy shall come in like a flaw, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. We don't finish. There's no enchantment against Jacob. There's no divination against Israel. For the shout of the king is in their midst. We don't finish. They say every tongue that rises against you in judgment, thou shall condemn. We don't finish. You don't read? You didn't read? We don't finish. He said, Oh, how is it that many have risen up against me? He said, But thou, O oh Lord, there's always a bot that changes the story around. But thou, O oh Lord, are the shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. He said, My horn has thou exalted as the horn of the unicorn. For you have anointed me with fresh oil. I'm conscious of the fresh oil much more than I'm conscious of the enemy. Listen, listen, listen. Don't deny facts, but refuse facts from ruling your life. Ha, huh? that thing you ate, Kai. Hey, we don't know. We have tried, but maybe in seven days you will die. Die? Even if they shall drink any deadly thing. It shall by no means hurt them. You shall tread upon scorpions and serpents, and it shall by no means hurt you. Die, die. Don't you know that what is inside me is not only intestine. There is intestine there. There is liver there. There is kidney there. But in addition to that, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Even the Holy Ghost dwells there. The word of the Lord dwells there. I'm not only of intestine. 
I'm of the world. I'm of the spirit. not be magnified see anything that tries to trivialize god run away it will kill you you go online they are talking and trivializing god it's an intelligence from the pit of hell thank god for doctors thank god for every other physical system that aids humanity but our reality don't stop on their table there's a realm beyond them there's a realm beyond them can i speak over you Hear me, everything dead in your life, they are restored now in the name of Jesus. Can I declare over you, every negative testimony that was spoken over you, I come by the authority of scripture, I decree they are turned around now. You see, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. I decree and declare over you, your future is blessed in the name of Jesus. intimidate you that's the way of the devil but we come by superior realities come by superior reality come by superior why, why, why do you think the book of revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 was written john said i heard a voice the same voice that spoke to me and he said come up here i will show you the things oh, yeah. and you think they want to show him about the future of earth they didn't start from there the moment he entered, he said, I saw 20 and 4 thrones. And on those thrones, I saw 20 and 4 elders. And all of them carried crowns. And they fell on their faces. And they cast their crown before him that sat on the throne. That liveth forever and ever. And they sang, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. He's the one who was, who is, and who is to come. All things are made for thy pleasure. There's one that is superior to everyone please hear me i don't know the yoke you carry till now but i declare over you as surely as the lord live it before whom i stand by this time next week all of those yokes would have broken off your shoulders i said by this time next week all of those yokes should have broken off your shoulders i command the yokes of sickness to break i command the yokes of affliction to break I command the yokes of stagnation to break. I command the yokes of poverty to break. I command the yokes of frustration to break. I command every pattern, every limitation of the bloodline that has kept you on one spot. Let it shatter now. Let it shatter now. In the name of Jesus. Who told you you will not be great? Did you not read Isaiah, Isaiah 60 verse 15? He said, although you were a desolate land, he said, no one went through you. He said, but I have made you. So your reality is there, but there is, but I have made you. An eternal excellency, the joy of many generations. See, I prophesy over you. You shall be a blessing to many generations. You shall be a blessing to many generations. Listen, we don't deny your realities. We don't deny your past. We don't even deny your present but there is something superior to your experience he said you were forsaken and hated no man went through you what a situation forsaken hated no man went through you he said but there is something i have done i speak over someone you are an eternal excellency you are the joy of many generations listen it may not appear like it yet but the Bible says, as thou knowest not how the bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child. It says, so also knoweth not thou the ways of the spirit. How can bones come out of fluid? It's the way of the spirit. So also your future can be predicted. Some of you listening to me here, it looks as if, even if God will help, it will take 10 years. Hear me. There is a dimension called the hand of God. If it comes upon you, you will defy status quo. You will outrun the chariots of Ahab. Some of you who are hearing me and you are thinking it will be after 10 years, even before this year is over, your reality between now and then will be like the difference between night and day. How does
a prisoner become a prime minister? It is by the power of the Holy Ghost. But the key is the fear of the Lord. Say this is the whole duty of man. Fear God. Keep his commandment. Can I show you two more precursors? Write them down. Sit down for a moment. See, when you go home, go and check every scripture that speaks about the majesty of God. Be reading them. You are not reading to preach. You are reading to become aware. Genesis 1, Ezekiel 1 and 2, Daniel 7. Read them. Read Revelations 4 and 5. Read all the scriptures that speaks about the dimensions of God. A point will come when, even when you sleep, you start seeing them. Say, the voice of God is upon many waters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it discovered the forest. It causes the high to come. It divided the flames of fire. As you are reading it, you are just wondering, my God. See the way Jesus was describing himself in Revelation 1. I am Alpha Omega. I'm the one who is, who was, and who is to come. I'm the one who was dead, but live forevermore. When you see the majesty of some angels, you will know that you can't exhaust the knowledge of God. The dimension that some angels carry, it gives you an idea. The one they are worshipping, what does he look like? Gabriel saw an angel and fainted. Daniel saw an angel and fainted. The glory. He says, some, an angel came to the earth. One of his foot was on the waters. All the waters. And another one was on all the land. He shouted one third of the bed that that kind of angel too bow to God. My God. So when we say God, if you, if sometimes let some graphic experiences come alive in your spirit. So you know who we are talking about. They say, Oh, you will not marry. You are shaking, you are shaking. Who said so? They say, Who is it that saith a thing and a comment to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? The Lord said. No shall desire a mate. No. And you are part of them. No shall desire a mate. Oh, you will not give birth. You want to die. Who said so? Were they there when God created the biological canals? When Moses asked God, I'm, I'm a stammerer. How can I speak? God asked him, Who created the mouth? The one who created mouth said, Go and talk. You are saying you are a stammerer. What do you know about mouth? We only gave you to use it. Keep quiet when we talk. Sometimes I'm in my room and I'm just calling the names of God. Jehovah Sabbath. <laughs> when you call it, there's a word. Jehovah Ra and Elion. Do you know what he calls himself? You know the meaning of El Elyon? It means the most high. No one sits above me. I'm higher than them all. And that's, a, that's God introducing himself. I am El Elyon. I'm above everything you know. So the highest height you know, I'm above it. I am support. I'm the Lord of hosts. I don't move alone. When I move, I come with an entourage. And if you see my entourage, you will fit. You know what we are saying? He shows up. He's Jehovah Shammah. He's Jehovah Nishi. He's El Shaddai. You know the meaning? multi breasted I can feed the whole world. I can feed the whole generation. I can feed the whole creation at the same time. You are the one thinking, oh God doesn't prosper man. God prospers man. Even the ant is God that sustains them. Even the flower in your compound is God that sustains them. You are the one who thinks man is God's only issue. He's dealing with every animal, every plant, and every man. And that's not all. Even the planets have life. Somebody give the Lord a song! Sit down for a moment. I'll just miss them. We're out of time. I don't want to stay in the atmosphere again. I want us to just dance for five minutes. Before, before. Don't let anything cripple you. 
If you go 40 feet, 40,000 feet above sea level, even houses become tiny like your hands. Meanwhile, the most high is above all. Both you and your problem is too tiny. It's a him that keepeth Israel. Neither sleep nor slumber. I'm aware. Almighty. Not mighty. Almighty. There's no power anywhere that doesn't have its root in God. Even demonic powers are perverted dimensions of power. The devil knows nothing about power. He's just using the ones allowed. <laughs> but perverted by his nature. Glory to God. You want to see? Learn the fear of God. Become conscious of his might and his dimensions. Number two. You want to grow in the fear of the Lord? Learn the love and mercy of God. When you know the extent of God's love, it will bet fear in your spirit. Psalm 130 verse 3 and 4. He said, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, he said, Who shall stand? Verse 4. He said, But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. So God shows us love so that we can fear him. That's why Luke 150 said the, the mercy of God that we those who fear him. So the fear of God is sponsored when you know the love of God. If you know the might and the majesty of God, and you know that God was willing to let go of that to die for you, you will not be afraid of hurting him. Hope you know that. Imagine somebody is driving or, or someone is flying a private jet he just lands from the private jet there is protocol and entourage everywhere to pick him up and they say wait wait he allows the private jet all the the, the rose royce all the lamborghinis that came to park him with the military entourage they say all of you wait wait and he walks up to you meanwhile you are admiring who is this person private jet land entourage soldiers guard of honor cars everywhere and they leave all of that and came to meet you and say what do you want and you say right now i'm hungry and they abandon those people and go to look for food for you when he's bringing the food you will ask him should i eat it <laughs> is it for me <laughs> you, you will be wondering if this person has my time the, the, is there any consequence if i eat it he said no it's because i love you <laughs> you won't want to hurt him you will honor him that's why paul said the love of christ constrains us most of us don't know the love of god when we say Jesus died for you, you need to understand what it means. That God left everything because of you. Hope you know the angels can never understand why God came for man. Before man was ever created, we have worshipped you, honored you, served you for aeons. Who is this man that made you leave your throne? First of all, you went to look for him in a garden somewhere. When all of us are clamoring to come to your throne room, you left to go and see him. Now he has rebelled against you. He is supposed to be destroyed. You now let go of everything to go for him. If you are aware of the love of God, it will create fear and honor your heart for God. Sit down for a moment. Now write this down. Go and study it. The third thing that begs the fear of God is your personal experience. There are certain experiences you have with God. It will trigger awe for God. Fear for God. Job 42 verse 5 to 6. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye see thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Sometimes when God wants you to learn the fear of God, He will allow you to experience Him in some dimensions. You will know that this God, hope you know when John saw Jesus, <laughs> he saw Him open blind eyes, open deaf ears, raise the dead. Mm, this is a special person he now died he was sure he died suddenly he came into the room through the wall <laughs> who opened the door nobody i don't need door at this level i've added more glory and then he thought that was it then he was in the isle of patmos they now say come up here when he now saw jesus there the bible said his leg was like polished brass his eyes were like touches of fire a sword proceeded out of his mouth he needed Jesus to be reintroduced to him. Who, who are you, sir? And Jesus said, no, don't be afraid. It's the same thing. I'm the one who was. 
I'm the one who is. I'm the one who is to come. I'm the one who was dead. You know me. You put your head on my chest. Is it? This chest? No. Is it? If, this, if Jesus said, come close, he will faint. So sometimes when God wants you to fear him, he will show you some glory. And then you now discover that the one you are dealing with is not a theological personality that people can argue in the conference. He is the I am that I am. It can be anything he chooses to be at any time. Experience. That's why we talk a lot about encounters. Because there are realms in God. There are dimensions in God that can never be taught you. When John was taken to heaven, he heard the voice of the seven thunder. He wanted to write. They said, this one can be taught. It can only be experienced. And that's why when people begin to have encounters with God, their Christianity changes immediately. Isaiah was prophesying as a national prophet until he said in the year that King Uzziah died he said I saw the Lord now he has experience nobody told him he said woe unto me that's a prophet he said I'm a man of unclean lips I dwell among a people of unclean lips help me a prophet do you know when, when they told him God, if they told him you are needed in God's presence he would have put himself together I'm the senior prophet currently on earth so it's my prerogative to be there and he will come with the robe of a prophet the first thing he saw was that the temple was filled with train and incense and when he looked up he saw seraphims they had six wings two covered their faces because they couldn't look at the holy one two covered their feet and with two they were flying and everywhere they opened he saw eyes everywhere what creatures are these all the arm all the leg everything had eyes and they were floating above the throne holy 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 the man fell down is this the meaning of holiness i thought holiness was a doctrine and when they looked at him he saw coals everywhere burning with flame that was when he knew that some fire doesn't produce heat they produce purity they picked one and touched his tongue now your iniquity has passed you need some experiences i pray that you have the encounter that will make you know god that you have the encounter that will make you know God. He said that which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we looked upon, and our hands handled of the word of life. You must move from hearing what somebody told you to experience it. If you will fear God, our generation have not experienced God. That's why we talk. Most of the fathers that have encountered God, sometimes when they talk, they say, mm. No need for argument. When you know Him, you will know that. It's even a, it's a dreadful thing to talk for God. When a spirit with that level of majesty say, go and represent me, you will be afraid. Because how can I represent you? What if I'm wrong? But we, we have not encountered him. We think God is about Bible verses. And we quote it with intelligence, with arrogance. Those who have encountered, have you not seen some of the fathers? When they come, sometimes they read a verse, they now kneel down. Lord, please give me the grace to be able to teach this verse. <laughs> Just help me, Father. Help me. Help me. Help me. How can a man stand before you? Fear and trembling hit them. If you have been brought into the courts of God once, imagine if you come into God's court and then you stand and they now begin to show you all the generations of humankind from set. And they say, see the quadrant for men. Because it's not only men that are here. There is the angelic quadrant. There is the quadrant for elders. There are quadrants for different witnesses of different dispensations. But you come from the dispensation of humankind. And then they begin to show you spirits of just men made perfect from set. You will now be standing somewhere. <laughs> it, it will now down on you that when God puts his presence in you, it's a fearful thing. We don't know him. We don't know him. And if we will fear him, and he wants to help us to learn it, he will show us some things. Did you not read about Thomas? How can you tell me that Jesus rose from the dead? Do men rise from the dead? Unless I see him, I will not believe. Uh -huh. If you want to see him, okay, wait for the next Sabbath. When the next Sabbath came, and Jesus walked in through the wall, he said, Thomas, you say you want to see? Here, behold. He didn't see, he fell down. And said, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. You can't see. 
and they say you believe now because you have seen he said blessed are they who have not seen yet believe have you not seen people around they are saying if god is real how can people be dying how can there be evil on earth if you want to help them try to explain the much you can but if they don't agree leave them there's a place where nobody will argue the moment you leave your body you will know the truth you will know and you will know that they don't argue with you the fear of the lord is sponsored by our experiences with god and finally the fear of god is learned when we know his commandments in deuteronomy 31 12 to 13 he said gather the people together men and women and children and thy strangers that is within thy gates that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the lord your god and observe all the words of this law he said and that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn the fear of the lord your god for as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over jordan to possess it so the way people learn the fear of god is when the commandments of god are taught them so this lawless christianity where we tell people whatever you do is okay that's why they are becoming more godless show people god's standard when god's standard becomes real to them it will trigger reverence for god glory to god but if you don't it doesn't affect god rather it affects you but blessed are those who fear him they have wisdom they have long and fruitful life they have prosperity they are protected from sudden evil and they become people of great wisdom ruling in every sphere of life if you learn this your life will be upgraded by very high magic even if nobody laid hands on you i'm not talking down on laying on of hands but i'm also saying there are many systems in god that are designed for our advantage and one of it is the fear of the lord listen before you take action ask yourself what is god's position on the matter if you are wise you will humble yourself and choose god's choice because when a man fears god it means he's a wise person don't be part of this generation that say well i don't care if that's what god said i don't care if that's what the bible said you will make yourself a victim that satan will buffet and make a mess of and please before you start making example of godless people be careful you don't know what they worship we worship god and these are his positions the people you are pointing fingers at and using as reference you don't know what they worship you call a chinese man you say he doesn't fear god why is he doing well do you know how many gods are in china you call an indian man you say he doesn't fear god why is he doing well do you know how many gods are in india do you know the one he worships you just see a man on twitter and on facebook you think you know him we must be careful not to use people exhort people because we are trying to undermine the word of god the word of god is our standard and therein lies our victory he said from the days of thy youth thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation.